in the early 1900s when a piece of scum Woodrow Wilson gave us World War I, gave us the Federal Reserve, gave us federal income taxes, gave us the IRS, and gave us the government school system. The banksters took over the country when the Federal Reserve was created. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira, part of the outreach team of Silver Bullion here in Singapore, where we want to help you truly secure your wealth. Gerald Salente joins us today. Gerald is the founder, director of the Trends Research Institute and publisher of the weekly Trends Journal magazine. He is the author of the highly acclaimed and best-selling books, Trend Tracking, and Trends 2000 with a 43-year track record of identifying, tracking, and forecasting trends. Gerald is world-renowned as today's number one trends forecaster. And we're delighted to have Gerald Salente join us once again today. It's time to saddle up and silver up for Gerald Salente. Gerald, welcome back to SBTV. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and thank you for having me on. Thanks for coming back on, Gerald. You're looking good, looking sharp in that leather jacket. Looking thank cool, you. my friend. Gerald, we are well into the first quarter of 2024, and, and I want to touch on some of your top trends for 2024. You forecasted and see how things are unfolding so far. Now, in your trends journal, you called 2024 to be a golden year for gold, or at least one of your, your top trends. The gold has been holding that $2,000 level pretty well as of late, but Jerome Powell, he's taking a pause with changing the effective Fed funds rate. What message is this going to send to investors and for the price of gold? Well, first of all, I want to make it clear. We're trend forecasters. We do not give financial advice. So having said that, they're going to lower interest rates. There's absolutely no question about it. And it's the run up to the presidential reality show, which people call an election, but it's nothing more than a it's, it's a clown show on TV. And the people that are running the government are the Federal Reserve, because when you look at who the U.S. Treasury Secretary is, it's this arrogant clown that used to be the head of the Federal Reserve, Ms. Faccia Bruta. Janet Yellen. So the former Fed head is now the United States Treasury Secretary. How stupid can anybody be to see that the banksters aren't running the country? So they want to keep the gang in charge in charge. So they're going to lower interest rates to boost up the economy in any way that they can. And I say she's a clown. I don't want to be called sexist because the clown that's in charge now is another little freaky jerk, Jerome Powell. Both of them, both of them, along with the other arrogant little clown jerk that was the former head of the International Mafia, excuse me, Monetary Fund, Jan, uh, Christine Lagarde over the head of the ECB. All three of them. Hey, Salenti, your trends journal, you're full of crap. There is no inflation. It's only temporary. Why, it's only transitory. And in the new woke world, why don't we call it transgendatory? Because if you're going to swallow crap, why don't you swallow that? So these are the jerks that let inflation keep going up and didn't start raising interest rates in the United States until March of 2022 and Europe until July of 2022. They did this to keep artificially pumping up the economy with cheap money because the clowns, other group of clowns called politicians, launched the COVID war. And in order to artificially prop up equities and economies, they pumped in trillions of dollars of, of fake money and zero in negative interest rates. So going back to why gold is going to go up, because the lower interest rates go, the higher gold prices go, because the weaker the dollar gets. And the weaker the dollar gets, the cheaper it is for other countries to buy gold. 
and take a look at the latest headline coming out. Chinese people buying up gold because they see their economy going to crap. Thanks to the COVID war, three years of zero COVID policy, which destroyed the economy. So it's very simple. Very, again, I want to make it very clear. The lower the dollar gets, the higher gold prices go up. And gold is dollar-based. As simple as that. And they're going to lower interest rates unquestionably. You know, you, you mentioned in inflation. We're being told inflation is waning. But in your view, do you think this is true? I mean, are you seeing prices going down? Yeah, yeah, prices are going down. From where? They're going down from their heights. The only reason why you're seeing a lot of inflation going down is because of energy prices. You, 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 got, you, got, you, you had Brent crude trading in the $70 range up until recently as the Middle East war keeps heating up, prices are going back up. But for the average person, again, 63% of it, this is not my, this is the data, 63% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. So you go, yeah, the price has gone down, but how about housing prices? Well, your median house, to buy, the median cost of a home in America is almost $400,000. While your median household income, that means two people working and family, is around 74500 So how are you going to buy a house? You're not. Rents are still high. Oh, but by the way, they rig the numbers too. You go to John Williams' shadow stats and the real inflation numbers double that. So they don't put rising housing prices in as a separate inflation number. And, and if it, the price of steak went up, uh, people are eating chopped meat now. So it did, we don't, aren't going to count it. So they're rigging the numbers. So the inflation is much higher and people are feeling it. You, you mentioned uh, something pretty interesting when, when you said the, the bankers are, are really in, in power. How do we, we move from, from where the people had the power to the politicians, corporations, and, and, and bankers? How did, how did that power shift? It began to shift really heavily in the early 1900s when a piece of scum, may he rot in hell, Woodrow Wilson, the president, former president of Princeton, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, bullets, bombs, and banks. So that, yeah, that guy gave us World War I. We had no business getting in that world. I'm a Yankee doodle dandy, Yankee doodle do or die. We're going there to fight for democracy. Gave us the Federal Reserve gave us federal income taxes, gave us the IRS, and gave us the government school system. The banksters took over the country when the Federal Reserve was created. End of story. The bigs control everything. You know, it's, it, you look at the numbers. Again, I got to read all this crap. You know, the magazines, what, about almost 200 pages this week and, and no ads. And you, you look at the amount of money that the multimillionaires and billionaires are giving to the politicians running for office from local office to the president. It's a rigged game. Morons and imbeciles call it campaign contributions. Adults call it bribes and payoffs. They own everything. They did away with the they did away with the, all the antitrust laws, federal the the, the Glass Steagall Act, uh, one after another. Robinson Patman, Clayton Antitrust Act, one after another to allow the bigs get bigger. When I was a young guy, you know, I, and I'm born in 1946, the perfect time. America's at the height. The spirit is so high. The World War II, II is over. And by the way, I'm the first of the baby boom. Yeah, why do they call it a baby boom? Because rather than dying in war, the guys and the girls wanted to have a good time, man. So they, you know, oh, can't talk about having fun anymore. So what goes on? The baby boom generation, there were grocery stores, hardware stores, stationery stores, drug stores. Now they're all chains. All the, all the little businesses are out of business. CVS, boop, own it all. Staples, Walmart, Target, Lowe's, Home Depot, Kroger. 
All the little people went out of business. The bigs own everything. Again, the data. Oxfam. 1% of the global population, 1% out of 8 billion, own 43% of the global financial assets. In America, A-M-E-R-I-K-A, the fascist state of America, the merger of state and corporate powers, according to Mussolini, his definition, 1% own 54% of the U.S. equity markets, 10% own 90%. All we are are plantation workers of slave landia. So the big zone, everything. They're in control of the government. They own the little scum politicians. And by the way, I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. I ran major political campaigns in Westchester County, the richest county in America. I was a chief government affairs specialist for the chemical industry, killing environmental legislation at the height of the environmental movement in the 1970s. All I wanted to do was be a member of the club. And I started growing up and that's when I changed. You know, I'm totally opposed to what I did, but you know, you do crap. So I've been on the other side. I have a picture of me with Ronald Reagan when I picked him up at the Chicago Hilton when I was 30 years old in, in, in Chicago when we put on a trade show at McCormick Place. He was our guest speaker and we put on a brunch of 16 of our board of directors. I've been with the president of Norway, former prime minister of, of, of the UK. I've been with presidents, prime ministers, and princes. It's a freak show. I was on the other side. And we have the freaks running the show. Who's your favorite freak? Who's your favorite? You're, oh, you like the little clown with the fake hair and, 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 a, and a thing about this big, uh, like little Katzon Macron over there in France? No, maybe you like Sunak, a little piece of scumnack. How about, how about Olaf Schultz, Olaf Schitz, Biden, Trump, Obama, Clinton, Bush, all crap. These are the people running the world and oh, and people don't like my language and they don't like that I get angry because they're not fighters and I am. I don't take crap from people. I don't give it and I don't take it. Oh, but you must obey your politician. Look what happens with the, with the, with, oh, they, the new king of, of, of England with all the little costume on and, and people dressed up like in drag. What the hell's going on over here? Oh, they're royalty. They don't pee or poo. We are in the most dangerous times of our lives. World War Three has begun. And they are going to take us to nuclear war if the people don't stop this. Again, I'm a Napolitano born in the Bronx. It's a different trip, man. You know, it's a different trip. I'm a little kid. I was the shortest. I was a premature baby. I came home crying one day. My father said, what are you crying about? I said, I got beat up. He looked at me. He said, you don't come home crying. And he walked away. I became the toughest kid as the littlest kid because I'm fast. I'm on you. That was the way I grew up. You didn't take crap and you didn't dish it out. And that's all this world has become. A bunch of crap swallowers looking up to their little clowns. If you're enjoying this interview with Gerald Salente and I, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you are looking to get price exposure to silver and gold while being fully backed by physical silver and gold with some of the lowest prices around, I'd urge you to look at Silver Bullion's product, Stargrams. Go to www.silverbullion.com.sg. Go to the precious metal section and click on Stargrams. Yeah, I hear you. Um, Gerald, do you, you mentioned the, the war. I mean, should it happen? Or let's say you, you're of the belief that it, it's already going on. Is this about the economy? Is it about resources? Is it about maintaining power or, or wanting to be a power? I mean, why? Why do we need to, to go through this? They're mentally deranged people. Got it? I've been there. There, yeah. Once upon a time, there was a man by the name of Dwight D. Eisenhower, five-star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces in World War II, two-term president. Google it up. He didn't want to run for president. At that time, he was president of Columbia University. 
any man seeking the office of president is either crazy or an egomaniac. Got it? Yeah, and, and I think he even went on to talk about or warn us about the military-industrial complex. That's correct. He said every <laughs> every gun that is made, you know, that they, they're, they're robbing the nation of the genius of the scientists, the sweat of the laborers, and the future of the children. And that's all America's become. Again, the cover of the magazine this week. America keeps going to war. As a nation keeps going as shit, homeless everywhere, migrants, roads rotten, subway in New York is a night in Calcutta, train derailments continually escalating, old crappy trains, no, no high speed rail, it's a junk shop. The whole country's down. Again, breaks my heart to see what's happened to this country. Breaks my heart. Again, I grew up at the top and I saw it go down to the bottom. I just came back from Florida. I went for a memorial service for a friend. Did you ever hear the expression, pigs can't fly? Been to the airport lately? They're flying. Gerald, you, you mentioned the, your generation of baby boomers. You think they're going to make it? I mean, do you think they're going to be able to, to live out the, the next 10, 20 years with, with whatever retirement they're having? And, and the, all the more, will the following generation say my generation, Generation X? Are we going to be able to, to retire? No. No, you got to keep working. Again, all we are plantation workers. You go to any, any of the chains, any of them, Target, Walgreens, CVS, any of them, Home Depot, Every time you walk in, a sign on the door, help wanted. They're paying the people nothing. Every time I go into one of these places, and I try not to go into any of them, my heart breaks when I see the people working there. I know they have absolutely no life and no future. Again, when I was a young man, there were, yeah, all my uncles on my father's side had fish stores. My mother's side, they were butchers. And they had to, everybody, you know, we all did great. And then the big started buying up everything, put everybody out of business. Bye-bye. You know, Gerald, I, I hear the phrase more and more, uh, controlled financial uh, demolition. In your view, are, are we in this sort of a controlled financial demolition? It's not controlled in the sense that it's a financial... It, it's again, you have maniacs in charge. You, you know, you take a, the, the hedge when, again, when I was a young guy, there were no hedge funds. There were no private equity groups. There were no venture capitalists. These firms, like you take Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola, they're owned by the same venture capitalists, they're not separate companies anymore. So what I'm saying, there, there, there's no, there's no plan. As I say it, the only plan is how could I become more of a billionaire. That's all they're concerned about. And all they want to do is own more, and they are. They control the governments. They are in total control. Yeah, speaking of uh, billionaires and, and people in government, uh, the meetings in Davos wrapped up a few weeks back, and, and you titled a copy of one of your, your trans journal editions with the words, Misinformation is our number one threat. Can you open up on this a bit? Yeah, that was their number one threat. They said that. And when you, re you li read at uh, Van der Leyen, the uh, Van der Leyen, the uh, head of the, uh, uh, was it, the European Commission there, she goes that businesses and governments have to unite to stop this misinformation and disinformation. In other words, you're only allowed to swallow their crap. And again, it's the merger of state and corporate powers. Business, big business and government working together. That's Mussolini's definition. The merger of state and corporate powers. A, a fascist founding. You're only, again, put on that mask. Stand six feet apart. When you go in an airplane, you better wear that mask when it throw you the hell out. But when you sit down and eating and drinking, 
You can take it off. But as soon as you stop eating and drinking, you better put it on. Because if you don't, you're going to get arrested. Because COVID knows when you're eating and drinking, it ain't going to bother you. And all those people sitting around you, it's fine. And stand six feet apart, exactly six feet apart, circles everywhere because the wind blows exactly in straight lines at six feet apart. Doesn't go up, doesn't go down, doesn't go around. You must swallow our crap. If you don't swallow our crap, you believe in misinformation. No jab, no jaw. We're in charge. Yeah, yeah. That was a man, that was a rough time for everyone. Rough time. Look what it did to China. It was launched in China on Chinese Lunar New Year, the year of the rat, January 2020. I used to be on Hong Kong TV in 2019 a lot. There were protests going on that they couldn't stop. I'm doing 20 minute shows and a guy, we're taking a break. And I said, Frank, so what's going on? Mr. Salenti, we're not going to stop. We're not letting the Chinese take over and, and run and ruin our lives. Yeah, guess what? They launched the COVID war. Everything's locked down. Boop, all over, finished. No more protests. China's in charge, Hong Kong. Got it. All the protests were going on, one of our top trends in 2020 that we put in in December before the new year, before the COVID war happened, was New World Disorder. There were protests going on all over the world as people were taking the streets in India, South, uh, 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 South Africa, uh, Lebanon, Algeria, uh, uh, France, the Yellow Vests, Bolivia, Chile. People taking to the streets, lack of basic living standards, government corruption, crime and violence. COVID comes, you can't go out in the street. Get back in your house. Everybody forgot it. Oh, now you got a you got a refugee migrant crisis that's off the charts. Yeah. Why? Because the COVID war destroyed the lives and livelihoods of billions of people across the globe. It didn't come back. Businesses that went out of business are out of business. Inflation skyrocketed. You made a bad situation worse. You know, Gerald, I, I know you're a man in demand, so let me just get one last question in here for you. How do you see us getting out of 2024? Uh, how, how do you see the end of the year looking, looking to be? It may be the end of life on Earth. There's a thing, everybody look it up. It's called the Samson, S-A-M-S-O-N, Samson option. From the mouths of the Israelis. If they lose, they go nuclear. And they have between 200 to 400 nuclear warheads. And they're going to lose. I'm not good at math, but uh, here are the numbers. There are 8 billion people in the world. There are 16 million Jewish people and about 8 or 9 million in Israel against 2 billion Arabs. And the genocide that they're committing is horrendous. And don't give me the crap that you're destroying the whole place because we're going to get Hamas. Yeah, you're bombing the hell out of people's homes, destroying over 70% of the buildings, hospitals, schools, churches. It is disgusting. And then save the crap that I'm anti-Jewish. I launched Occupy Peace a decade ago. I'm anti-war. I'm not anti-American because I hate Americans' wars. So they could shove the crap up you, you know what. And I'm not an anti-Semite because the people running Israel aren't Semites. Netanyahu, all of them from Ben-Gurion, Golda Meir, all the way through the Ashkenazi Jews from Eastern Europe, the Semites are Mesopotamia region. The Palestinians are Semites. But they want to just shut you up. And again, you read the Trends Journal, freedom of speech is gone, just like the clown lady over there at, at Davos saying, you got to swallow our crap. If you don't, you believe in misinformation and disinformation. The Trends Journal, we put the facts in there. So when we're writing about Israel, a whole section... We go to Jerusalem Post, Haaretz, uh, Times of Israel. Oh, guess what? Then we go to IRNA, ISNA, Tehran Times of Iran. Want to hear what they have to say? 
Want to hear what Al Jazeera has to say? No, you're only allowed to listen to us. You're only allowed to listen to one side. That's the world today. They're prostitutes, the media. They're media whores that get paid to put out by the corporate pimps and government whore masters. We're in the most difficult times in my lifetime. Biden came out a couple of days ago blaming Iran for the death of three Americans in Jordan because the people that killed him, he said, they got the weapons from Iran, so Iran is responsible. That's his language. Okay, let me get this straight. Because Iran allegedly supplied the weapons, and these people used it to kill, and Americans died. Iran's responsible. Yeah, that's right. They're an accessory to the crime. Huh. Okay. Then the Russians could bomb the hell out of America because America is giving all those weapons to Ukraine to kill Russians under the Biden language. Oh, and the Arabs could slaughter all the Americans they want because Americans are giving the weapons to Israel to slaughter all the Palestinians. So America is an accessory to the crime. Why, how dare you say that? You're only allowed to look at one side. America could do anything they want, kill anybody they want, and give the money and give the weapons to people to kill. But if Iran does it, that's bad. Look at the hypocrisy here. And when I just said nobody's saying, nobody, anywhere, anyplace. And that's what makes a Trends Journal different than any other magazine. Your magazine is one of my go-to uh Go through information pieces. I appreciate that, that magazine, Gerald. But before we, we head out, can you let the people know how they can follow you on social media and, of course, about your Trends Journal? Yeah, just go to Gerald Salenti, C-E-L-E-N-T-E, and you see us on YouTube or, tre- or Trends Journal, trendsjournal.com to get the magazine. And by the way, it's under $3 a week, it's $2.85 a week. Nothing, nothing. The Wall Street Journal, $5 a day. Weekends, New York Times, six dollars, six dollars. Wall Street Journal, you get nothing. You get propaganda. You, you, you know, Wall Street Journal, I call it the Wall Shit Journal now. You read the, the weekend wrap up of the equity markets. Not a word about what's going on in Europe or Asia. The new person they got in, they brought in from the UK to run it. She said, "We're going to put in things that people want. I want data." No, no. People went in, in frigid water because it's, a, it's one of their big picture. What do I care about this stuff? You know, you have the little stupid stuff now. I need data. I need facts. I want all the economic data I can get so we can make trend forecasts. No, no, forget about it. We're just going to give you, you know, oh, the prince is in the, the king and went to the hospital. He has prostate. What, the fuck? what do I care? What the hell do I care? What the hell do I care this guy went to the hospital? My sister died. May she rest in peace in November. Anybody care about that? Your friends died. Mother died. Friend. No, no, no. But they're royalty. All right. That's the crap how they get the people to look up to the lowlifes. Yeah. Condolences with your, with, with your sister. Is she the one that had that uh, the broken arm or something when she was younger? Yeah. She lost three quarters of her hand as a kid. Right, right, right. And I want to show you something right back. Sure. Again, we grew up in the Bronx, and she broke her arm, fell off a bicycle. They put the cast on wrong. She was right. seven, eight years older than me. And Gan Green said it, and she lost three quarters of a hand at 12 years old. My sister Grace went on to open the second topless go go lounge in New York City. <laughs> Grace's wow. lucky lounge. And I was a bartender there, 22 years old. <laughs> Good looking shirt, sign of the time. <laughs> right? And then she went, moved to Florida. She was there from 68 to 84 and opened up House of Babes. <laughs> that was my sister Grace. May she rest in peace. Had a heart of gold. And the mafia left her alone. It's 1968 because she was an Italian woman. So they didn't bother. And all the cops, all you had to do was give them free drinks and they didn't care. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I've i had quite a life, you know, and, uh, and that's only part of it. But but she was so she was so tough. 
Because she, after she lost her hand, she became a different person. She wouldn't follow the system anymore at all. She broke completely away from it. Oh boy! So here's the. This is this is one of my books. What Zizzy gave Honey Boy. These are my other books, by the way. Trend tracking. Far better than Mega Trends, Time Magazine, Trends Two Thousand, International Bestseller. But this is my favorite. This is about what America used to be. It's called What Zizzy Gave Honey Boy. Zizzy is the Neapolitan dialect for auntie. Zia is aunt. Zizzy is your auntie. I don't know if you could see this. This is my parents' wedding in 1934. You see the way they're dressed, what they look like. They look better than the Bezos, the Buffets, the Gates. The way they dress, the style. Again, they, my father worked in fish stores. They worked in the women worked in factories, putting stuff, secretaries, you know, construction workers, everybody elegant. 1934, Italian immigrants at the height of the depression. Look what they look like. And now look what the country looks like. It's a slob show. Breaks my heart what's happened to this country. Yeah, same. You know, Joe, you, you are one incredibly interesting guy. I, I think one day we're just going to have to have a, a story about you and, and, and your life and your family, especially, and, and, and just how it's all woven together and, and, and made you, you. I think we're going to have to do that one day before the end of this year. Okay. Because we might not get to the end of this year. We might not make it to I'm, This is serious what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's deadly serious. So yeah. thank you so much for having me on and thank you for all that you do. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you also, Judd. I appreciate everything you do and uh, we'll we'll look forward to, to getting you back on again. Okay, man. All the best. That was Joe Salente sharing his views on the economic trends coming ahead in 2024. To follow Gerald's work, please go to trendsjournal.com. If you like this video, please subscribe, share, and give us a thumbs up. All are greatly appreciated. Audio-only versions of this interview can be found on iTunes and Spotify. 